Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Hope all is well. Be sure to watch the video until the end and let's get right into the information. I do want to go over this recent article written by Ashish Birla, SVP of Product for Ripple, why real-time payments are more important than ever. Now, just a few key points. Again, you can read this on your own time. I just want to summarize and kind of talk about a few bullet points. If you've been in this community for two to three years, you can fast forward a little bit, but I just want to kind of reference this again. So we can agree that COVID, of course, this pandemic, this push has kind of helped with this narrative to go cashless. Again, saying cash is very, you know, infectious, etc. Going obviously digital will have more transparency, more speed, better interoperability, in due time obviously there's many fragmented silos as we know now with digital payments today they're not solving the initial issue and the thing is with xrp as we'll get into it's solving much more than just digital payments and trust it's actually freeing the trillions of dollars that are pre-funded all around the globe throughout this inefficient correspondent banking network so just pay close attention here digital payments are essentially just a series of ious passed between various financial institutions this requires institutions across the world to engage in complicated legal arrangements of pre-fund to pre-fund currencies with each other to alleviate counterparty risk okay so there's an issue of trust and also middlemen so additional inefficiencies and going through multiple parts created by the IOUs. These delays and inefficiencies, especially in such uncertain times, underpin the current correspondent banking system and highlight the need and importance of real-time payments now. Now understand guys, when we're saying replacing SWIFT in the middlemen, we're talking about the entire correspondent banking system that basically runs over SWIFT. All right, so why are RTP, again, real-time payments and why do they matter? Real-time payments combine speed, data and communication in order to execute a payment in a matter of seconds they grant users immediate access to their funds and instant communication of their transaction while providing near instantaneous settlements and finality and also you i mean you have tracking of the entire payment but when it's in a matter of seconds with settlement with finality tracking is not even essential i know with ripple net their suite of products we have x current swift essentially took the same product and built it on you know their own as swift gpi yeah it's tracking the payments but that's only really important when it takes still you know three days or a couple hours to send a payment when we actually are utilizing distributed networks to do this and have direct channels it's going to be much much faster and whether it takes you know six months or it's already been being built for a decade now on the back end that we don't know about or it takes 10 years i think that we can agree that this is going to occur now again with cryptocurrency people love the most dangerous market in the world obviously nascent market not as much liquidity in these ecosystems so again little there's tons and tons of price volatility there's whales manipulating markets with a lot of ease there's very little regulation and of course luckily we're seeing more and more regulation but i think that we can agree that it is exciting for sure we're here for a reason some people are here to trade and make money some are here to obviously you know back assets they believe in and make money from that and other people are just here for the simple technology to back it during an exciting time um, personally, you guys know me, I'm here for a return on my investment and also I'm very excited to see these future fintech hubs, whether, you know, there's places in Texas or even Miami now kind of really building the future of finance. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Absolutely. So the initial desire for real-time payments can be traced back to the rise of instant technology, talking about obviously looking for more efficient ways of settling payments. And keep in mind, guys, I mean, there are clients, of course, we're working with on-demand liquidity, working on the most illiquid corridors, not trying to solve every corridor problem that exists today, because frankly, XRP has kind of this step approach, right, to develop the liquidity. We're going to talk about additional, you know, partnerships and investments with even SBI to have bigger institutional market makers that will also improve the liquidity of XRP. As we know, Miguel Vias, former, um, essentially he was head of XRP institutional liquidity. He provided well over a billion dollars in liquidity to XRP. Now, people that come to this asset class and have never even done anything to contribute or even build for these ecosystems say XRP is still sub $1. It's 17 cents. It's a scam coin, a banker's coin. That's just laughable to me because we are so early during this time. I think there's going to be many, many winners, but obviously I'm only putting my money that I'm comfortable with in the assets that I think have the most backing fundamentally and even from a TA perspective, looking at the people, looking at the teams, looking at the roadmap, looking at their competitors, looking at their market share. If it's too big of a market that they're initially tackling, it's highly unlikely if you guys study a lot of what you know venture capitalists look at, they're looking at kind of getting those little niche niche markets initially. 
All right, and as we know, Mark Cuban, Shark Tank, goes on and says this repeatedly, that when a typical asset class surpasses $1 billion in market capitalization, it's relatively here to stay. Now, we do not know how long it can trend sideways or down before finally going up, but I believe that eventually, after speculation will still be around in this market because it's absolutely exciting, utility is going to be racing that ground floor. Now, my belief is when utility does it even slow and steady like you guys believe with price appreciation, I think that the speculative side of the market is going to take notice of that, going, wow, this actual volume and gradual, you know, rising in transactions going across the ledger moves the price slow and steady. And even David Short, CTO of Ripple, says, yes, most people would take notice if you're seeing an asset going up 1% a day, 1% a week, 1% a month, a month. And this would create a lot of FOMO of institutions to invest as well. So I think there's going to be a combination of speculation and utility driving these markets upward, all right? Nothing is a straight shot. That's not sustainable to just stay at a high price forever. You need true volume. We need to build the, you know, again, the on-ramps for all of this, the barriers to entry. Obviously, you know, even with pay ID, it's a huge thing with this open payments coalition, guys. We're a step in the right direction. Again, crypto domains. You can get your own domain name. For example, mine is kevincage.crypto. Now I can link xrp ethereum you guys can just send crypto to that address rather than a typical cryptocurrency address of a bunch of serial numbers and i definitely recommend if you have not already to check that out again links are in the video description for unstoppable domains all right and we can play a quick video on that later on but i want to go over some additional information so again talking about this push we can understand central banks around the world are obviously we're seeing you know past five years people have been experimenting with central bank digital currencies now we see that vanguard symbiont um, counterparty these groups are working on distributed networks themselves and we're going to go over some interesting things that even matthew liny shared showing that i believe uh, it was a uh, vanguard cto I'll, I'll show you his name anyways uh, warren pennington or something like that and essentially they have a rollout plan to use you know these types of systems for resiliency security and then in due time using actual tokens now Yes, there are many scams in this open market that exist, but there's still an actual necessity for certain networks and ledgers or blockchains to use a token because it's a finite supply. It prevents spam on the network. There's there's different use cases for each and everything. All right, talking. Again, roll a blockchain. You guys can read this. Highly recommend it. You get the gist of ODL utilizing XRP. Eliminates the complex IOU infrastructure by allowing FIs to leverage the XRP ledger. You can actually send IOUs over that. Now again, XRP is the native digital asset on the XRP ledger. It'll still play a fundamental role, even if you send Bitcoin over the XRP ledger, which, by the way, is significantly faster than utilizing Bitcoin and, you know, letting proof of work, you know, these mechanisms and consensus kind of run their route. All right. <clears throat> Again, digital assets is a mean of means of instant settlement to avoid the pre-funding, as I've said, freeing up this capital, guys, roughly anywhere from two, five We've seen figures from, okay, so we've seen Miguel Vias. We've seen some of them say $27 trillion that is pre-funded around the globe. We've heard Navin Gupta even say $5 trillion. I think, I'm not sure if it was Michelle Bond or uh, Michelle Bond or Monica Long. Someone saying maybe 5 or $9.6 trillion. Bottom line is, I think we can agree that it's trillions of dollars pre-funded around the globe, no matter how you measure it. And again, this is about capital efficiency, letting this money work for you. So freeing that capital to go after additional revenue streams or future investments. I think that all banks are going to want to capitalize on this. Again, the tier one banks in the existing ecosystem do not want to you know, lose this fight per se to ripple. That's one perspective. Again, you can also argue the other. I kind of... I have a very quantum perspective on things because I think it can be everything and nothing. Instead of ones and zeros with classical logic, I think that the truth is with reality, it's it's a lot more quantum where it can be a little bit of one and a little bit of zero, just like in quantum computing. But before I get too weird with that, guys, just keep in mind, nobody knows exactly how this is going to go down. Nothing is guaranteed in this space, but I think you can tell based off my 400 videos, I'm beyond excited. We've done the research and it is simply a matter of time. So again, mobile wallets, you know, custody, security, liquidity. There's just so many things to this ecosystem. It's much more than just the coin of your choice going up in price, guys. We need a lot of steps. And I know that this can be frustrating because you obviously want that moon money or whatever, you know, or, you know, Maybe you older, mature people are looking to actually just get a return on your investment, you know, pay off your house, things of that nature. I get it. But 
Again, there's so many parts, and I, this can be a bad thing, but it can also be extremely exciting knowing that we are still relatively early, where the barriers to entry are not there yet for you know the typical grandma to get on and start sending payments. So when that's the case, I think that we're going to be a lot closer to market maturity towards the capital markets, and that can be in the future. But I think that we could and most likely will have many, many bull runs and bear markets before that time. And yes, there will be higher highs in this market. Pay attention to the trend. People will still, you know, make fun of Bitcoin price or XRP price. Just three years ago, XRP was half a penny. All right. Imagine that's a return on your investment. You don't really see that within the stock market. So for those of you that have only been here for two years, my advice, not financial advice, be patient. All right. You see what's being built here. Again, the only thing that's not reflecting is price, creating that cognitive dissonance with good news. And then again, price going down. I think you're becoming all really strong. And I think that cryptocurrency in particular, provided you're not beyond frustrated, is really, really teaching all of us some great fundamentals for future investments as well. So I'm pretty thankful for that as well. All right. So right here, guys, Matthew L-I-N-Y. So I'm just going to pronounce this fewer... Uh, Fiorano software is integrated with Temenos T24. Again, Temenos, they provide software to roughly 3,000 banks. We know that they're connected again with this T24 stack with Ripple specifically. We have Deloitte involved, the Blue Zell gateway. Exciting times for sure. And again, remember, Ripple joined this ISO 20022 body, the standards body. They are the only company and group right now focused on DLT. Well, why is that a good thing? Well, because we're seeing the biggest groups and basically monopolies of the world like Vanguard building and talking about DLT and they've you know and there's groups fidelity all of these groups that have been buying digital assets and even building their own ecosystems so yeah you could say I'm quite bullish with this all right so even right here Temenos as we've said is XRP integrated guys follow Matthew L-I-N-Y you've been yes and absolutely follow here fame 21 more this is Darren Moore you can type in Darren Moore XRP to watch actual you know videos of the people in the know discussing all of this so Right here, white paper, Temenos T24, core banking integration. Temenos has partnered with Fiorano to deliver T24 standard-based connectors to integrate Temenos T24 core banking. Now, again, we've gone over this. This is old news, but I'm going to kind of roll it into some additional information. So right here, back from 2016, Deloitte showcases integration of Ripple technology into Temenos T24. Again, Deloitte, one of the big four, at least Deloitte for accounting, at least. Now, obviously, allowing real-time international payments. Cross-border is the focus. Now, can there be domestic use cases for XRP? You know my thoughts. I believe it's absolutely possible. If the liquidity is there and it's more efficient, or these issues between bridging different permission networks like JPM coin and a Bank of America coin in these little walled garden silos, yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe even for 24-7, 365 capabilities, but also keep in mind that the real-time payment system of the globe, or at least in the U.S. specifically, with Finastra, ACI Worldwide, Volante, they're working together to kind of make these systems a lot more coherent and flexible as well with the clearinghouse. And again, Darren Moore has already shown all of that proof that XRP is already with Ripple integrated with Finastra's global pay plus payment platform. And that is Finastra, again, one of the technology providers for the domestic real-time payment system for the United States. We can talk about the Faster Payments Task Force. And again, Ripple's Pat Thelen or Tellen, he's right on there as one of the advisors or technology provider advisors. Keep in mind, there's only four. And of course, he from Ripple is included. But again, I'm sure that's just another coincidence but these are some of the fundamentals that we're dot connecting and speculating on and you know hoping that this would correlate to a higher xrp price and actual business in the future all right so again right here again deloitte just presenting this we can talk about it full integration so full integration with the ripple protocol and the temenos core banking software again this is 3,000 banks right there and i mean people say yeah but ripple's only 350 or 400 customers well Obviously, I believe it's a lot more. We know Finastra is even has the biggest banks. We know 9,000 customers, but Finastra, they have the top 48 of the 50 banks in the world connected. And yes, they are RippleNet enabled. Are they using XRP today? I don't think so, based off the volume that I'm seeing on the ledger, but anything is possible. And that's kind of what we're looking at is we're migrating towards waiting for, you know, uh, regulation, whatever narrative that you kind of believe makes sense. 
I think there's too many things. I don't think one person knows everything with the space. It's just kind of a bunch of groups of individuals and we're watching the evolution of this occur just like we did with the internet. So using the Blue Zell Altitude Gateway technology, we can see enormous potential for banks to leverage disruptive technologies. So notice it's either disruptive or enabling, removing that friction. So again, depending on the connotation you want to make their existing payment processes faster, cheaper, and more secure, again, more resilient, less, you know, obviously less counterparty risk because you're basically reducing it all together. Um, you know, we can utilize smart contracts, et cetera. We'll talk about that with Vanguard pushing those benefits for asset backed securities as well. So innovative financial institutions are aware of this and are looking for ways to integrate their core systems with disruptive technologies such as distributed ledgers or blockchain. Funny enough, XRP Ledger was literally the first blockchain of its kind to move away from the proof of work consensus model. Interesting. All right. So again, right there, Blue uh, Blue Zell, licensed software company based in Canada. We already know Canada and Singapore specifically and their kind of connections to Ripple and many other groups. All right. You can see their protocols. While Ripple technology is an open source system based on Internet protocols, permitting domestic and international payments in any combination of currencies to be settled directly between parties without the need for central clearinghouses or correspondent banks. So regardless, guys, this is a great technology. Are there going to be other competitors? Are there existing competitors in this ecosystem today? Yes, and there probably will be many more. Some will fail, some will succeed. But I'm just saying that if we can get a slice of the pie, just like there's many groups that exist today in nature, I think we'll be fine. But that's just my bias. So obviously do your own research. Um, and you guys let me know your honest thoughts down below. You don't have to agree with me, but let's just keep it keep it classy. All right, now again, right here, Swift certifies for Rano or, you know, Fioriano. I don't even know how to say it. ISO 20022 accelerator for cross-border payments and reporting. So we're going to see more and more about this. Again, minimal impact and disruption overall, just helping customers deliver this ISO. We've heard all of this getting delayed. You know, ISO seems to be too slow. We saw those comments that Ripple even made saying, you guys are too slow. We're going to, you know, something has to be done now. And that is something that we're paying attention to. So we'll see exactly how this all plays out. Right here, Matthew LINY. So again, the International Monetary Fund, guys, research on central bank digital currencies, June 2020. Just a, key, a few key points, we've recognized a lot of the projects mentioned here in how, again, R3 is working with them, central bank digital currency ecosystem might look like, and the country's exploring these types of technologies. So again, you guys can read the survey, you can download it here. I was checking it out earlier, but again, same thing that we're seeing on a daily basis. IMF working paper, you know, you know, Madam Christine Lagarde left is the former, um, why am I blanking? Former uh, director of the International Monetary Fund, and now she is the president of the European Central Bank. All right. And the entire euro system, we've talked about T2S, the target two securities, all of that. So we can see countries where retail CBDCs are being explored. So you can kind of see Mauritius, proof of concept starting in Korea, Finland, Hong Kong. South Africa, again, a lot of the BRICS nations, if you haven't noticed, we can see Sweden, remember they're utilizing with the, uh, the Krona, their CBDC with Accenture, one of Ripple's first, you know, investors, also working with R3. You guys can kind of, you know, do your own dot connecting. We can see Iran as well. All right, just things to notice. All right, and then right here, process roles and responsibilities, talking about CBDCs. And then right here, we're talking about actual central bank payment system experiments with wholesale CBDCs. And we can see R3 Corda. We can see Quorum. We can see Ethereum listed all right here. We know Corda, again, is able to settle via XRP. You can see Bank of Canada. We talk about Project Jasper many times. You can see Project Stella with the ECB and Bank of Japan. Um, Crypto Addy does a fantastic job covering all of that with Japan. I think SBI has some major things going on. If you guys deny that X or SBI will be one of the biggest catalysts and, you know, big institutions, shareholders of Ripple that will really push XRP adoption, I don't know what to tell you because I think the information has been there for quite some time. All right. Even Project Infanon, the one I like to say because it sounds like I have a lisp, um, Infanon, Lion Rock with Hong Kong Monetary Authority. We have Brad Garlinghouse in pictures with them as well. And yes, <clears throat> we know that, you know, that Ripple seems to have had some type of consultant like roles with many people in, you know, Singapore, Hong Kong Monetary Authority, IMF, BIS, World Bank, etc. Um, I've never heard of this project, Project Aber, Project Aber. We've talked about Project Ubin, again, with Singapore, um, even South Africa Reserve Bank, one of the BRICS nations. I'm paying a lot of attention to the BRICS nations in particular. Um, watch, you know, the Asian Investment Infrastructure Bank. Watch HSBC as well. I've just heard, you know, a lot of rumors and interesting things going on over there. All right. Next up, 
So in terms of Iran, because we just saw, I believe is a retail or wholesale CBDC. And again, the Iranian real pair, Xir, I'm going to pronounce it. This is an exchange that lists XRP. And as we know, again, this is on XRPRK.com, guys. Definitely come here. I believe that you can actually get instant updates whenever Leonidas updates the website. All great information. Everything sourced. Again, just a great way to continue doing your own research. This is the second exchange to list XRP in Iran after Novatex in February 2019. All right. Very, very cool. All right, and what we were talking about earlier, again, Matthew, L-I-N-Y on Twitter, guys, definite follow for the XRP community and also some work by King Solomon recently back on YouTube. If you have not checked out his channel, please do so. Again, some consistent new research every single day. So right here, again, Vanguard pursues blockchain advancement in ABS. These asset-backed securities, again, DLT security transaction, maybe by the end of the year. So King Solomon actually did even a quick video going over this. This is basically just what I wanted to show you out of this. So head of Vanguard's investment management, FinTech strategies group warren pennington said this the goal of the first stage was to accustom participants in the transaction to the notion of a digitized security rather than a token when participants are then comfortable with the process and how it interacts with their systems the goal will be to grow the number of investment banks custodians again people holding and securing and custodying these assets issuers and investors and pursue the first actual issuance within a year possibly by year end Interesting. So again, priming the masses, kind of the same approach that Ripple does. And just like Brad Garlinghouse, obviously conservative as always, has explained, yes, we get people on a Ripple net, get them used to using the X current kind of X via, you know, the whole old X series that we used to talk about using that software, whether it's to connect corporates or obviously enhance the messaging. And then eventually, as we're starting to settle and improve their settlement time, we have XRP to save them that additional percent. All right. And again, that flywheel effect is a powerful thing. We've talked about Moore's law. We've talked about Metcalf's law. Again, essentially Moore's law of connectivity with the nodes, the customers on the network, making it that much more valuable. As we know, we saw how fast even Facebook's valuation and Amazon's valuation goes up exponentially. We are early days. I think that we really can't really notice the effects quite yet. All right. So again, King Solomon does a video over this. I'm not going to butcher it. Obviously, he can explain it much better than me as he really just kind of dug into this. But just showing even Symbiont, Symbiont's bridging Bitcoin and Ripple via counterparty gateway. And just to kind of go through this, again, Vanguard announces progress in applying blockchain to ABS markets. This is on fa-mag.com. Again, just sourcing everything. You can read additional stories. 2020 may be the year for that, as we've talked about. Consumer data or consumed data for $1.3 trillion worth of funds. So again, essentially data and information right now, but who knows what this could lead to? Could this have anything to do with XRP? Potentially not, but I'm showing you that Vanguard, if you guys know, essentially Vanguard's one of the biggest groups in the world, and that is not in a hyperbole, they are absolutely massive. Again, and you can see they're working with Symbiont, Okay, we already saw that counterparty gateway. We can see BNY Mellon, obvious connections to Ripple. We've talked about City, of course, again, State Street holding about a third of the world's digital wealth and Vanguard. Just talking about this whole ABS settlement on DLT specifically. Again, they're doing pilots early time, but if you really think this is just a bubble, why are the biggest groups investing billions of dollars into this asset class to transfer trillions of dollars? Look at on a daily basis with the transaction volume of ACI worldwide. Look at the DTCC. Now, I'm not saying that XRP is going to be doing all of that. What I'm saying is the value is there. Like, obviously, quantitative easing with the Federal Reserve, we're printing into infinity. This is the internet of value. This will be much bigger than what the internet was for data, in my opinion. All right, we'll keep going as soon as I can find my cursor. Okay, so again, Vanguard pursues blockchain advancement in ABS, talking about the same thing, just essentially the same article again. Um, billion residential mortgage-backed securities. Okay, so RMBS, right? Symbionts. All right. And again, King Solomon just sharing that. And right here, I just wanted to read this quote. So again, this is from Adam here, CTO of Symbiont and co-founder of Counterparty said this specifically. Symbiont is proficient with all of the most advanced technologies in crypto finance and is always ready to use the right tool for the job. Again, integrated with everything, ready to go. So kind of reminds me of, you know, connecting to a single API integration like Ripple and their clients. With this marriage of the of the counterparty in Ripple Networks, each benefits from compatibility with the other, and the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. 
Well said. All right, now just to finish things off, guys, XRP Crypto Wolf sharing this. Now, this is not just any news. This is huge. I, I believe Crypto Eddie probably already covered this, I'm assuming, with, you know, obviously being one of the biggest main liquidity providers. We can see B2C2 will become SBI's main liquidity provider as SBI is constantly expanding during these acquisitions and investments for crypto offering specifically to millions of their existing clients. So Ripple's early investor, SBI, one of the biggest stakeholders of obviously Ripple and R3, has taken a $30 million stake in this cryptocurrency institutional prime broker, B2C2 Group. Again, this is a really long article on the block crypto, really good information. I only got about like halfway through and was kind of just skimming it. So again, obviously do your own research, check this in, but I do believe that the implications and effects of this will be quite large. Again, bridging these gaps of traditional finance to obviously and getting the, those legacy infrastructures connected to this new world that is coming. All right, one last thing before ending this video, guys, on Unstoppable Domains, the link is in the video description. Again, if you have not claimed a domain yet, I recommend doing so if you plan to be a part of this cryptocurrency space in the future. You can link all cryptocurrency addresses, guys, to a single domain. Again, mine, for example, is just kevincage.crypto. These domains are available just like in the internet, you know, dot com bubble. People were able to buy domains and sell them later and kind of do what we call domain squatting and selling their domains for a profit. Exciting times for sure. We can see that the majority of people that are signing up we're kind of getting between six to eight domains i think i have about 10 right now that i'm utilizing um, exciting times for sure so definitely just understand that you can connect your ethereum your xrp any cryptocurrency to this single domain in the future now obviously the infrastructure the user design is going to be getting better in the future but if you've not checked this website out or at least created an account i recommend doing so so I'm going to close out today's video playing this one minute video clip. If you've already seen it, don't worry about it. Again, the links are in this video description. If you have not created an account, I'm going to show you this just to kind of give you a better explanation. Hopefully you like today's video. Been super, super busy. So appreciate your patience. And until next time. What is a blockchain domain? A blockchain domain is like a .com or .org, except that the records are stored on a blockchain. Blockchain domains do two things that regular domains can't. Simplify crypto payments and build uncensorable websites. Blockchain domains replace cryptocurrency addresses with a human readable name. Add your crypto addresses, your Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and any other cryptocurrency addresses all to one domain. Now someone just needs to type your domain into a wallet and send. No need to remember long addresses. The same domain can be used for websites. Traditional domains, also called DNS, are part of a centralized system controlled by ICANN, an international organization that maintains the records of who owns what domain. Blockchain domains are not part of the traditional domain system. They are what's called alternate routes. Domains are stored by you in your wallet just like a cryptocurrency. No one can move them without the private key. Blockchain domains can also be used to build an uncensorable website. This works by pointing content from a decentralized storage network to your domain. Blockchain domains require browser plugins to resolve inside most standard browsers because they are new and not yet supported by the traditional system. Traditional website content is stored on centralized servers that are controlled by large companies. These companies can easily take down your site if they object to it or at the request of a government. Decentralized networks like IPFS store content that only you can put up and take down. Blockchain domains plus decentralized storage equals an internet that no company or government can censor. This technology has the power to spread free speech across the world.